Welcome to Silver Pros, sponsored by Hero Bullion. I'm your host, Yankee Stacking, and I'm here with my tremendously talented metals maestro, my co-host, Silver Dragons. What's up, Yankee? How you doing? We are joined by our sponsor, Jake Haugen, the founder and president of Hero Bullion. How's it going, Jake? Hey, guys. Doing great. Thanks for having me. What do you think is going to be the driving force behind silver stacking going forward? Or put another way, what will turn everyday people into silver stackers in the months and years ahead? Okay, well, uh, the... The easy answer to that is we know that headlines drive people to this market. So let's say, you know, the average person who hasn't stacked silver before uh, is going to see some headlines uh, that are going to drive them into this the stacking journey or begin them on their stacking journey. Mm. And the the thing that's going to drive them is inflation. I don't know if you guys have been paying much attention. I hope you have, but you got to know that inflation is coming. Uh, the numbers uh, that we've been seeing over the summer, they're not true. Uh, inflation's much, much worse. So we're going to start seeing inflation in a number of different areas. Uh, uh, the easy one to look at is just cost of food. We we, we all know that the cost of food is going to be going up. And uh, that's a scary thing for people to experience. And so I don't like to talk about like gloom and doom kind of things. Yep. I like to approach silver stacking in a, in a really positive way, in a positive light, and think about all the good things they can do for us. Um, but there there is a time to, to kind of take it serious. And I, I feel like we're going to be coming into that this fall and into the winter. People are starting to realize, you know, like, hey, we need to preserve our wealth. <laughs> this is yeah. this is insanity, you yeah. know. So um, can you talk about what changes we might see coming uh, with the online bullion dealers, with the sort of mom and pop uh, local coin shop? Uh, what we're experiencing here is uh, inventory getting tighter and tighter. OK, uh, generally, when the inventory gets tight, the premiums uh, go up. And so mm -hmm. I, I felt like, uh, maybe a month ago, premiums were coming off in a, in a good way. Uh, people were, were able to take advantage of that coupled with a little bit lower spot price and, and score some really good deals. Those days oh, might no. be over for no, a while. No, you Jake, know, right? don't, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell the truth. Oh. Uh, you know, if, if, if I would have called last Tuesday and said, Hey, how, how long till I can get silver rounds in stock? you know, delivered, I would have been told two, three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. If I call last Thursday, remember we had that, we had that big drop on Wednesday, uh, drove a lot of demand. We sold about three weeks, two and a half, three weeks worth of demand on, on that day last Wednesday, uh, pushed all production out another two to three weeks. So now if you're looking for minted silver rounds, for instance, um, those, those are going to be five to eight weeks out now. And so when that inventory tightens up, the premiums go up. It's, it's, it's simple supply and demand economics. Um, when it comes, so what, I guess the, the short answer to that is you're going to start seeing, uh, moderately higher premiums. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize that this time of year, a lot of the mints are changing over. They're getting rid of their 2021 issued items, uh, for instance, right now, just today, we started pre-selling 2022 uh, gold and silver Britannias. They're kind of one of the first ones to kick off. So we're going to see uh, a limiting of inventory on the 2021s. And then there's always a little gap where stuff gets tight. Well, you throw that in this environment that we're in right now, as far as supply goes, and it strains it even further. Okay, so you're going to start seeing higher premiums. Uh, you're going to start seeing uh more pre-sales happen, which I'm honestly, I'm not a big fan of. It gets real messy. Um, but uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's all that we're able to offer is, is pre-sale items. Um, when it comes to like smaller, uh, smaller dealers, I think there's an opportunity here to do some cash transactions and they, they can, uh, they can transact at a much smaller level. So you're going to start seeing, uh, them be able to compete more with the larger online mm. bullion dealers, the mom and pop shops. And I, I'm a big fan of that. We do have uh, a new U.S. Mint director on the horizon at some point. But then also there's this crazy thing with the $600 transaction uh, where they're going to be requiring like these IRS forms for these much smaller purchases. You know, how's that going to affect everything? When it comes to the U.S. Mint, uh, I always look at it as 
two different there's two different sides of the US mint. There's the collector side and there's the bullion side. And we play in both of those, but we more focus on the on the bullion side. Mm, right. We know I, I know that uh, SD Yankee, you guys have both been in that queue at the US Mint and got <laughs> you got uh, flagged as a bot. Let's say I think we've all we been get beat up. <laughs> right, it's frustrating. It's, hard to get anything. it's yeah. frustrating, Very and, frustrating. It, and it's you know the way I look at the US Mint. The US Mint is there to serve us, serve the American people, right? Right. And uh, it's frustrating. I don't think there's a lot that we can do. Uh, uh, you know be upset and all that kind of stuff. You, you, we all got to be on, we have to be beyond getting upset about n- losing out on this stuff. It's just, it's kind of par for the course with, for the U S mint. We, as the American people subsidize the U S mint. So they're under no real motivation to, for instance, turn a profit. They're not treating it like a business. I will tell you the word is that that is changing. The U S mint is, is changing uh, their, philosophy in some ways instead of just being like a service like we're here just a service company to be like a customer service or a a market service company where they're really trying to take care of their customers on the bullion side who are the authorized purchasers um they're trying to take better care of them and so that's exciting for me to hear they have a lot of work to do right you're telling me there's been there's been a breach of trust with the American people, right? right? I mean, right. I, that sounds really dramatic, but that's it's the truth of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's hard to feel good interacting with the U.S. Mint right now, and that relationship needs to change between the U.S. Mint and us people. What about this $600 transaction thing that we're seeing kind of push down the pipeline? Is that going to affect, I mean, is that going to affect you? I know it's probably going to affect a lot of these Instagram sellers, you know, these other people who are using PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But what do you see going on with that? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I've, I've always enjoyed seeing the, the, the peer-to-peer transactions on Instagram happen. And you know, when I, when I started Hero Bullion, that was one of the first places I started interacting with the community was on Instagram, and I was kind of blown away with the amount of like you know commerce that goes on on Instagram. There are a lot of people who operate these quasi businesses on Instagram. And then it's just the government who, you know, tax the rich kind of thing. Uh, they're by, by implementing this, they are not taxing the rich. They're taxing, you know, the, the weekend warriors or the moonlighters. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that at all. Like that's, that, that to me is really disappointing and disheartening. I think it, I think it harms the hobby. It harms trade in, in precious metals and, uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I, I mean, I, I hope that, you know, you see this stuff on paper and it looks like, you know, X, Y, Z is going to happen. Hopefully, you know, something changes or the actual practice is a little bit different um, because I think it would be a a tragedy. Yeah. They don't need to know about all this. (laughs) Jake, I have another question for you because it's, uh, it's the bear market we seem to be in now with silver. Yeah. All right. So we've been down, I think uh, over, over 20% from this year's high back in, I think February. And, uh, you know, there are people that are, you know, they got the diamond hands, right? They're they're not going to sell. But we're also seeing some capitulation out there. So yeah. when do you see this bear market ending? Oh, man, that's a that's a tough question. <laughs> you know, my my gut says, if you remember, um, March 2020, silver, uh, silver spot price tanked effectively. Um, and, and that was due to a liquidity crunch. Okay. I don't think, um, that that is out of the realm of possibility. Uh, now I think there's, there's a good potential that we do see another liquidity event like this where, where we see the spot price of silver and, and, and precious metals in general drop. Now the other side of that coin, if you will, uh, we're already in a stressed supply on gold and silver. Well, I would say silver definitely more than gold, right? Um, and what happens to premiums if silver goes to fifteen dollars again? Do you think premiums are Through not going roof. to adjust to that because there Absolutely. already isn't enough, you know, yeah. silver out there to meet everyone's demands? What mm-hmm. do you guys think? What do you guys 100%, think? Hundred percent pre. I I think silver goes to fifteen. We could see thirty dollars an ounce for to actually obtain the physical. It could be a hundred percent premium. Don't you agree, Yankee? I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. I got to ask you though. By by the end of this year, you know, Silver Dragons and I went back and forth on this. <laughs> Where do you see at least spot price? 
I, I do think that we do experience some kind of liquidity event that drives down silver a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I feel comfortable saying that, um, uh, because if I'm wrong, who cares? But, um, but also I, I don't think it really like, you know, um, stops people from buying silver because <laughs> as we just discussed, we think premiums for physical silver will actually, uh, counteract any drop in spot, right? So, I mean, I don't think it's out of, it's out of the realm of possibility to be very near $20, you know? Yep. Last year, you told us your favorite silver coin to stack was the Britannia. Yep. That was you loved it. it. Was all about the Britannias, and I and I do agree with you. Like the Eagles were not the coin. The premiums were too crazy. Yep. So, all right, what do you think moving forward into next year? What's going to be your favorite? Oh yeah, the Britannias are beautiful. One of the reasons I really like the Britannia. Uh, is because the British Royal Mint went through tremendous effort to really elevate their product. They added a ton of the security features and uh, and 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 made their product like you can you can see where they're what they're where they're trying to go. They're trying to elevate their product to be right up there with the eagle and the maple. Everyone knows the eagle's number one, maple's number two, right? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I I think I'm a lot like you guys. I love this stuff. Uh, if <laughs> It makes the answer a little bit easier for me when you say for stacking. Okay, just you right. know my personal preference. I have preference uh, A, B, C, but for stacking, for um, investing in precious metals, I'm saying 2022. It's going to be the maple. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. There, there awesome. are a, a, a few different reasons why. Uh, and while I'm open in this this role here, the, the thing I'll tell you is we uh, traditionally Silver Eagle premiums and Silver Maple premiums are pretty close. And, and, and the, it, as Silver Eagle premiums go up, uh, the, the Maple will, will follow behind. In the last week, we saw Silver Eagle premiums jump $1.50. Our cost went up $1.50 in the last week. And that was due to that event Wednesday that we talked about where we sold a tremendous amount of, of of uh volume uh when it comes to the silver maples the silver maples have not increased a dollar fifty they went up you know 25 cents 30 cents on the premium side and so you know because of this disparity and um a few other reasons that i'll get to that's why i'm picking the maple for this year okay and i and i, w I will extend it a little bit to say um royal canadian mint product okay this stuff is super clean the stuff that they make is super clean. The knock for years and years, SD, I know this is one of your pet peeves, was the milk spots, right? Mm -hmm. and, so, and so they, they in 2018, they rolled out the Mint Shield technology, and it was just kind of a wait-and-see game, right? So yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I, I'm, I'm, I can say pretty confidently it works. The Mint Shield technology works. We're not seeing milk spots. Can I, jump on, can I jump on that? Because yeah. I am – building my maple monster box right now so jake when you said that i was like yeah baby that's what i wanted to hear every single one except one tube that i've purchased is either 2018 or later and not one maple has milk spotted on me wow. i have 2014s they're all milked up but none of the ones after 2018 so maybe they got it right yeah, I, I even and, have some eagles that are milk spotted from from this year. Oh yeah, yep. We we've you know we we reject some of the some of the uh, silver eagles. You know, uh, as we're preparing them for shipments, if they're milk spotted, they get kicked out to the culls, and we sell we we just sell them as culls. Technically, those coins are still BU. A milk spot does not make a coin not BU. Now, does it make it have less eye appeal? Yes. Mm. Does it make the likelihood of someone being uh, dissatisfied with it higher? Obviously, yes. Um, the maples, I just, I love, love, love the maples. Uh, they have the anti-counterfeit technology. They have the radio lines. They have the micro engraving. They have like the history and the stability. They're four nines guys, four nines pure. I think being second place to the silver Eagle in terms of sale volume, they could maybe get a little, a little, uh, con uh, content, right. Uh, but they're, they continue to improve the product. And I love seeing that because for us, that's, that's service, right? I mean, that's, yeah. That's uh, one less thing for you to worry about when it comes to your precious metals, what? right? Yeah, I totally agree. Hey, Jake, this, this has been awesome. Man, you did a really great job helping us see the future 
of silver stacking. I really appreciate it. Guys, if you haven't checked out herobullion.com, you have to check out Jake's company. They are a wonderful online bullion dealer. They know their stuff and they have great customer service. Jake will do you right. So check them out. We'll definitely have to have you on for some more videos because you got the insight. I know everyone appreciates that. Love it. Thanks, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed listening in today, and we'll see you next time on Silver Pros. Stack like a pro.